So come in and start with the 70 denier. This is in chartreuse. I want to make sure that as I put this pattern together, I pay attention to an index point, and that is the hook point on this. Everything that I do with the abdomen, I want that to happen at or behind the hook point. Once I have my thread attached, I'm going to come in and I'm going to catch this piece of small black UTC wire. I'm going to slide it down to that same tie-in point. And then as I wrap rearward, I just want to make sure that that wire is on the far side of the hook shank. And I'm going to continue to wrap down until that hook shank takes an almost complete downward turn and is pointing down at the vise. Once I've reached that spot, I'm going to take my thread, I'm very simply making sure that I'm laying down smooth wraps that are next to each other and side by side. Get it back to my index point and just to keep it out of the way, I'm going to lay it over there. I'm going to take my black wire. I'm just going to start to work it up and around the abdomen. Once again, keeping that hook point in mind. So once I've reached that there, I'm going to walk these two wraps, just back them off. And I'm going to come over the top of that wire, catch it behind it, in front of it, make sure it's nice and secure, and then helicopter it off. At this point, I'm done with the 70 denier. I'm going to whip finish that just right on the hook shank there, and then I'm going to switch threads. And once again, I've already had my bobbin rigged up set to go and I'm using 8 aught uni on this the creator Mr. Shea Gunkel recommends a 70 denier in black but since I don't have that I'm going to use the 8 aught get that attached here to my shank then I'm going to bring in about 24 about two dozen strands of floral fiber and this is in black for this pattern so I'm going to bring those in catch them with a wrap slide them in there to where they tuck down behind the bead and then make sure that I secure them and I want to wrap rearward to just behind that hook point it's just back over it so that I'm right about in that area and those are going to set back at this point I'm going to use a little loon swax and get that on the thread we're going to bring in some peacock black ice dub and we're going to create very simply a dubbing rope here so I want to be sparse with these fibers so that I can get it to compress into a nice firm rope as I wrap this forward here. Swax is helpful if it's something you've never used. Uh, sticky, goopy stuff really adds some nice tack to that thread. I prefer it over maybe a traditional beeswax or anything else that you'd use on your thread. Once you have your dubbing rope set up, I'm going to take it. And very simply wrap it forward here. Nice firm pressure. I want this to be nice and snug. And when I get up behind the bead, I want to make sure that I feel firmly that empty space up behind the bead. When I tie those legs off, I need that to be fairly firm so that they don't splay and stick too far out to the side. Once I have the dubbing in there, I'm going to pull all the strands, that floral fiber forward. Catch it with a wrap, cinch it down. Throw down a wrap in front of it. Once I get here, I want to approximate this and I want about half of these separated out. And I want half on the far side and half closest to me. So once I think I have about half, I'm going to grab that half and pull it back down along the side of the fly. Secure it with a couple firm wraps here. And then same thing on the other side. Take that half, pull it back along the side of the fly. And this is where the payoff of having your dubbing packed nicely in there is going to help you out. After I get those tied off, I'm going to come in. I want those legs. I'm going to snip those just on the back side of where the dubbing reaches to. Come in. I'm going to whip finish this. And when you bring in the five minute epoxy, you want to work this just up the top surface of the abdomen and onto that thorax that it may, as you apply this, the first coat may seep through uh, the hairs a little bit on top and into the dubbing. And if it does that, you very simply going to want to let that dry and then come back in a couple minutes and reapply that just to build up the top. And after one more application of the five minute epoxy, you have a finished splat roller.